the Sometimes series, Win, Lose, and Play, written by Stacy Eaton, narrated by Julie Walters and Jean Branson. Chapter 1. Haley. Today was going from bad to, oh my god, just let me go back to bed and pretend this day never happened. So far, my alarm hadn't gone off and my car had a flat. I dropped my barely working cell phone into a puddle of mucky water in the parking lot, and then I'd used the last bit of cash in my wallet to pay for a cab to get to work. The moment the taxi drove away, I realized that the project I'd worked on till two in the morning for the day's very important presentation was still sitting in the passenger seat of my car at home. Haley, you all right? Brenda asked as she paused by the side of my cubicle. No. I groaned. I'm not all right. I took a moment to explain my morning travails. Walter is going to fire me for sure. I dropped my head into my hands. Brenda glanced around surreptitiously. The presentation is at ten, right? Yeah. Take my car and run home. I'll cover for you while you're gone. She hustled to her office on the side of the main work area. Our offices were comprised of several small rooms along the perimeter, surrounding extra small cubicles stuffed into the center of the main room. Trying to get anything accomplished in the cramped space was barely possible, and God help the worker bee who might be claustrophobic. Are you sure? I asked as I followed on her heels. Absolutely, because if you don't, Walter will fire you. She winced over her shoulder. He has ten people coming in for this meeting. If we don't get this marketing account, then we're all going to be fired. She tossed me her keys, and I thanked her profusely as I snuck out of her office and rushed out the agency's door to grab the elevator. The building that housed our marketing company was old, and the elevator was as slow as molasses on a cold December morning. I was tempted to take the stairs, but with the way my day was going, I'd probably fall down every flight and break a leg, or worse, my neck. God knew I couldn't afford that. I couldn't afford anything. I lived paycheck to paycheck, and no matter what I did, I never had an extra buck at the end of the pay period. I heard the door to the security company next to us open and close behind me, but I kept tapping my toes and staring at the numbers above the elevator doors as if it would make the damned thing arrive faster. It was rush hour, and everyone was coming into their offices. With ten floors and one elevator, it took forever for it to go to the top and then back down again. I glanced back at the door to the stairs as I chewed on my lower lip. Maybe I should chance it. The elevator was still on the fourth floor, and I knew that with the way my day was going, it would bypass my floor and go all the way up before it came back down. I checked over my shoulder, making sure Walter wasn't standing at the glass door glaring at me. If I could just get out of the building and into the parking garage, I could get home and grab the presentation without him knowing. Come on, come on, I murmured impatiently as I tapped my toe. Didn't you just come into work? A deep, husky voice asked from slightly behind me and to the left. I turned, and instantly my mouth went all Sahara Desert on me. This guy worked at the security company, and Brenda and I had spent many a lunch break talking about what a fine specimen of a man he was. Although Brenda thought his shoulders weren't quite wide enough and his biceps didn't bulge as much as she preferred, she did agree that he had a great backside and that his boy-next-door looks were quite appealing. Personally, I liked the fact that he didn't look like the Hulk. In fact, he wasn't all that much taller than I was. Well, maybe a bit more than I thought, since I was wearing three-inch heels, but I didn't have to crane my neck all the way back to look into his beautiful green eyes. Maybe he was 5'10", I decided, as I continued to stare at him. I licked my dry lips. Um, yeah, I did. How did he know that? I was in the elevator with you on the way in. Had I spoken that last part out loud? My cheeks warmed slightly. I forgot something. I need to get it. I glanced over my shoulder again. Preferably before my boss sees me leave. I murmured the last part to myself. The man looked back at the glass doors to my office. I don't see anyone, so you're good. 
His smile was the first, okay second, good thing that had happened to me today. The first, of course, was having a friend like Brenda who let me borrow her car.